Well, Kara, it's time. Who's coming up? Gene, first up on The Greatest Show, we are excited to take it out to St. Augustine, Florida, and the grand opening of Bozard Ford Lincoln. <laughs> Gene, this is the grand opening uh, this morning of Bozard Ford Lincoln in St. Augustine, Florida. And uh, no one better to uh, take us through that grand opening than our good friend of the roundtable, Ed Roberts, the Fixed Operations Director. Ed, welcome to the Fixed Ops Roundtable. Thanks. Glad to be here. I know this has been uh, in the planning stages a long time coming. Um, before I, we get into the Bozard organization, tell our audience a little bit about yourself and... Um, uh, your background in the auto industry. I, uh, my name is Ed Roberts. I'm the Fixed Operations Director here at Bozard Ford Lincoln. I have been here, this month is eight years uh, that I've been here. So it's uh, been, a, been a cool ride from the start of where we was to where we are now. Um, I got in this business in 1992 as an apprentice technician and moved through that and went to work for Ford Motor Company for a little period of time and um, came back home and then left and went to work for Toyota for a little while. And, uh, but you end up coming back home at some point. So I came back home a second time and uh, ended up here eight years ago and, and got this journey started. And uh, it's a fun ride. Ed, what changes have you been involved with um, uh, at Bozart since you've been there? I was talking with my CFO the other day. The, uh, this place is totally different than it was eight years ago. And eight years is a long time. But uh, when you talk from a business perspective for things to be completely different than what it was then, it, uh, it, it, it puts things into perspective, but we had a total of about 40 employees eight years ago. And today we have about 350 on the ground earning a paycheck. Wow. Wow. Yes. We, what, just, and, what, just a little bit of growth. <laughs> and what can we attribute that to? It's a lot of things. The, uh, we're in St. John's County, Florida. And uh, it has number one school district in the state. So there's a little bit of draw from that. So the, the, the county's growing. Um, but ultimately, it's, uh, it's taking care of our people. And we take care of our customers. We take care of our employees. Our, our employees take care of our customers. And that continues to compound itself, especially in today's world. Your Lincoln dealership is not just going to be any Lincoln dealership now. I understand that you are number one in the nation or in, in the world, perhaps? Well, it, it has a little size to it. So yes, the, uh, when we set out to expand service, we didn't know exactly how we was going to do that. But uh, when we ended up acquiring the Gander Mountain, Mountain building, um, that's an 84,000 square foot building on the uh, first level. And we added a second level to it. So it's probably 110,000 square feet now. And so from a square footage standpoint, we are the largest Lincoln dealership on the globe. And before you take us on the tour, uh, I got to ask you, what do you like best about what you do there at, uh, at Bozard Ford Lincoln? Without question, it's my team. I have the best team on the planet and uh, they embrace what we do. We all work together to come up with the ideas. I get the credit for it sometimes, but I don't earn it. They earn it. And uh, so the best part about this place is 100% my team. All right. Love it. All right. So grand opening today. Thursday, September 24th, 2020. Take us on the tour. Uh, tell us what we're taking a look at here. All right. This day has been uh, long awaited. We're ready to, uh, to check that box and have it off our plate here. So let me give you guys a tour of our grand opening that's happening here in a couple hours. Today is the day. And uh, we'll start with coming down through inventory. We have moved some inventory over over the weekend and get in preparation of. Uh, we've actually been moving a few cars through here already. Uh, but this is our introduction to the, uh, to the world. Uh, this is where it all started at, uh, when, when the dealerships was combined. And this is the adjacent property. So let's go for a tour inside the store. The, uh, you guys are in for a real treat. As we roll through, you'll see that uh, we, the showroom where we created a vitrine where it's lighted from the floor come, and, and really highlights some of the vehicles in the showroom. So we got up lighting, down lighting, side lighting. Um, it just really kind of showcases the entire dealership. It really is the showcase the cars, but it really showcases the entire dealership. This is a three and a half year project coming together. This is our coffee bar for our, our, our customers. The, the, uh, so it's inside of our uh, customer lounge, service customer lounge. 
This place is huge. It's about 110,000 square feet total. And uh, this is the hallway that kind of connects everything. You can see that we still got a couple things that we got to get finished up on um, with some touch up and stuff outside of customer site. Um, but from a customer standpoint, this place is ready to go. The, uh, I want to take you guys for a tour in the shop. The shop is, uh, we've had the shop open for a little over a year now because mm -hmm. um, we broke this project up into phases. And there's a few quotes out here in the shop with different things. We really wanted the guys to, uh, to have their own personal touch to it. They're used to me posting quotes on whiteboards. Um, so when it came time to, uh, when, we, when we put these boxes up originally, we was gonna put Lincoln logos on it and I told, told Bo, the owner, I said, we're not putting Lincoln logos on there. The sign out front says it's Lincoln store. We're gonna put what we wanna put on these boards. Um, but this is just casing in the, uh, the real racks. And uh, then it gave us an area of opportunity to, uh, instead of having one or two whiteboards around the place, I got them all over the place now. So <laughs> um, we, I challenged all of my guys to come up with a quote um, that they was pleased with. We had about 300 quotes turned into us. And so we chose the management staff, narrowed that down to 60. And so these, uh, are their, these are their quotes, Ed. That's amazing. These are their quotes. Um, Bobo's art is the owner. Um, him and his sister owns it. So this is his. So he was going to get a spot regardless. And Jeff King has a spot. He's my GM. I did not want to put one up because I wanted my people to have as much space as possible. So I did not do one of my own. Um, but this is common uh, stuff that we talk about around here. Do common things uncommonly well. And, and when you do that, you're not surprising anybody. You're just showcasing that you can do what they expect you to do at a level that they never expected. And uh, it's very simple. And, and when you take care of your people, your people are proud to, uh, to show that off as well and let them know that, and, and to show other people they can do things uncommonly well. But these guys picked their quotes. And so then once we, we made them up, then kind of had another little voting piece of where we're putting which one and whatever else. So it's really their creation, 100% their creation. They got some ownership in it. They've done a great job with it. I think it turned out phenomenally well. And we've done it with just vinyl. So at any point, uh, maybe we'll do it once a year, maybe we, we'll change up a bit, but we can change these things to anything we want going forward. If something else comes up, somebody comes up with one of their own, uh, we can change them up at any point. Um, when, we, when we added in the service department that we built in the Lincoln building that, we got, that we're looking at right now, it gave us a total of 96 service bays on the property. And, uh, and we got two mobile trucks that we are very successful with. So with those two, um, I really call those mobile dealerships. We call them service departments, service stall, uh, service, service stall, but they're really a mobile dealership. Uh, they don't sell a vehicle when they're out, but they're selling our brand. And then they're doing everything that has to do with service. So been very successful with that, but it gives us a total of 98 bays. And uh, I have 83 Amazing. technicians. That How many again? Eight, 83 that get it done <laughs> okay. for us every <laughs> single day. And I'm sure it won't be long. We'll go to multiple shifts again with the restaurant having longer hours and people changing when they get the vehicle service, uh, the wrap around when they eat. Um, that We'll have multiple uh, shifts and uh, longer service days and, and be well over 100. Uh, we'll, we'll draw that out as it comes. And, and I look forward to doing that. Uh, the, uh, you know, and I, I got to ask you, being in Florida, uh, I, I would assume that a lot of business, you know, auto deal dealership business can be seasonal there. Do you see that or is it pretty steady year round? We're pretty steady year round. St. Augustine is a tourist town, but it's not a snowbird town. We do have a few snowbirds that come through, um, but we stay busy year round. Carry a little bit more through our store. Uh, we've added a restaurant into the corner of our dealership simply because as we all know, the car industry is changing and we needed to find something to make our store relevant longer. And so if we can pull traffic to it, then that certainly increases the relevancy. So we have a Ford's Garage restaurant. Ford's uh, Ford Garage Ford. is the name of the restaurant. It is, it is a chain restaurant. It is not Ford Motor Company. Uh, they do have to pay royalties to them. Um, but this is a corporate run store. It's not a franchise store. So the corporation of Ford's Garage is running it. And I think it'll set the tone for how Ford dealerships are built in the future. Um, but the elements of this place is really, really cool. It, uh, it's an old service station themed uh, restaurant. 
It'll, it's the only themed restaurant outside of the fish camp here in St. John's County. Um, so I think the, the county will embrace it. And uh, it, we've needed some areas to have some choices for food. Mm -hmm. And this creates great options for that. And it's the only Ford's garage that's going to serve breakfast. That was one of our criteria when we went chasing these, uh, one of these things down. Was, it's got to serve breakfast. It's got to serve lunch. It's got to serve dinner. When we first set out, it's a Lincoln store. We, we thought we might want a high-end steakhouse, but then that's just dinner. Um, and we want traffic. So it gives our uh, customers another waiting, another place to wait. Our restaurant has 150 different beers, so we call it the F-150 beer list. Um, there's just a lot of cool elements from a service station themed restaurant that really ties to it. Our Penny Wall is, uh, um, has 40 beers on tap coming out of it. We got uh, three cars sitting out front, three old cars sitting out front. This, we got an old car sitting up in, uh, uh, over the bar. Uh, just a really cool atmosphere when you walk into it. Putting some final touches on Ford's Garage, just making sure they're getting a couple of the elements that need to be finished up here. Johnny's been great to work with, done a great job for us. Uh, he's our GC on the restaurant. Um, he's here this afternoon as well, and uh, we're, we're, we're going to have some fun here today. This afternoon, there will, there will not be an empty seat in the house. We are still socially distancing, so there's either plexiglass between us or six feet apart. Um, but I can assure you we won't have an empty seat in the house here in a few hours. The, the, uh, it's been a long time coming, and today is, uh, is going to be a fun day. We've been looking to hire 110 people for the restaurant over the last couple of weeks. So this is where we're doing all of our interviews. This is an ongoing process. Uh, we'll go through training. We'll look to carry on about 80 of those employees, um, bring 110 in to get us started. And, and some people is just not going to fit, some people. Um, but overall, uh, on campus, we'll have about 350 people here earning a paycheck. Forge Garage is very similar to us as far as uh, wanting to put the right people in the right places and uh, create a culture and an environment that is warm and welcoming to our customers. So it's very in tune with, with hiring the right people. And uh, one of the things that I've always focused on, and, and they're very similar in, in their hiring process as well, is the three C's, character, competency, and chemistry. And uh, the competency piece, what we can kind of take care of. Chemistry, you got to fit in. But more so than that, we want to make sure with a character piece that you're somebody that we want representing our store. And uh, they, they, Forge Garage fills those values as well as we do. So we appreciate having them as that partner in our store as well. We, uh, as I said earlier, we want to take care of our people. We take care of our people. Our, our people will take care of our customers. And one of the things that we've done to do that, as you see, is we've integrated a daycare on site that goes from infancy all the way up through VPK. And uh, we call it the bird's nest. So each room is labeled with some type of bird. There's bird feet that kind of leads the path from the road up, up here to it. So we kind of have a lot of fun putting this together. Ed, thank you so much. I know this day has been a long time coming and you've got a very busy agenda ahead of you uh, for the balance of the day. And congratulations on, uh, on the grand opening. Thank you. You know, Ed, uh, I have actually some questions coming in. I've got one from John Traver regarding uh, the BDC. And he says, you know, he'd be curious to see what you're doing regarding your BDC and how that all fits together. Great, I have some footage of that as well, but that's a great question. The, uh, actually our BDC are the first people that we moved in administrative wise into the Lincoln building. So uh, that, that was the first one to take some ownership over here. Um, but as you can see, I, I have 14 people in here um, at various different times to cover different shifts they're not just a service BDC. They answer every phone call that comes into the dealership so we can control that quality and then we'll run it around, we'll, we'll route it from there. Um, but these girls are a lifeline for sure. Excellent. Ed, first class all the way. So congratulations again on the grand opening. We'll, uh, we'll let you get back to work, but we're gonna also see you here in a little bit. You're coming back in on a couple different discussions we're having with our, uh, our all-star panel. So thank you for everything you do for the round table. Hey, thank you. And I'm like a bad dream and I keep coming back. So I'll see you a few times today. <laughs> hey, actually, it's a good dream, Ed. We love having you and thank you so much. Thank you.
Well, Chad, uh, you and I are both extremely excited about our next guest, and especially because of the message that's involved. You and I are both personally impacted by the message that we're going to hear in a moment. And uh, it's all about the way that we're planning on supporting a charity that you and I have talked about for quite a while. The Fixed Ops Roundtable, Gene, uh, we've been discussing finding a worthy charity. And uh, we've been looking at several different possibilities for months. And then we came upon Len Belavia, who's uh, an active part of the Fixed Ops Roundtable. Len uh, is the uh, principal of dealerlaw.com, Belavia Black PC, and represents dealers around the country. And when we heard about uh, uh, his Dealers versus Cancer Initiative, uh, we were all over it, Gene. That was it. Yep, it, that, was, that was the one that we were going to go with. So we reached out to Len, and uh, Len, we're so glad that you're here. Welcome to the Fixed Ops Roundtable. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here, guys. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, Len, tell us a little bit about the, the backstory, uh, how this came about, Dealers versus Cancer. Yeah, uh, I mean, it was a circuitous route. I didn't plan this. <laughs> uh, in 2016, I guess you'd say I was in the... Uh, the throes of a very busy practice. I've been representing dealers for, at that time, 30 years, uh, ironically, in wrongful termination cases. And then as I was busy working on, on one of those cases, I got a, uh, a wrongful termination notice of my own. Uh, after a routine physical, <clears throat> I was told my PSA, which is the metric that um, doctors test for with respect to prostate cancer, so I got the call while I was in my office, and uh, they said they want to do further testing. Well, make a long story very short, uh, I went from don't worry about it to uh, a few weeks later that I had stage four terminal cancer, and then they were setting me up with social workers to meet for end-of-life planning. So that's, that's the first stage of this drama. Uh, fast forward two months later, after I was busy packing my office and uh, selling off everything I owned and trying to take care of my family, uh, I got this amazing telephone call in my office, literally while I was packing boxes, uh, to say, listen, this is the most uh, horrific news I could deliver, except that it has a wonderful ending. We made a horrible mistake. We misread your biopsy, and you did not have terminal cancer. As you could well imagine, I mean, the convergence of emotions that took place from absolute joy to anger. Well, anyway, uh, here we are four years later, and I decided that I would take this. And uh, I'm one of those people that concludes that things happen for a reason. And uh, why would I have to go through that and my family have to go through that? But for the fact that, well, I have what I consider to be after 30 years of representing the most generous and magnanimous uh, industry, out there that uh, maybe I was um, to become a messenger. So I contacted the Prostate Cancer Foundation and uh, asked them if there's anything I can do to help. And they uh, did a little due diligence and they said, well, you know, you happen to represent based on our analysis, the most generous uh, group of clients. They are well aware of the generosity and how magnanimous auto dealers can be. So they deputized me to spearhead something that we collectively decided would be called dealers versus cancer. So uh, I happily signed up for that. So for the past several years, I have been uh, conducting or producing a exotic classic car show as the centerpiece for the fundraising effort. And now that has mushroomed. Um, last year, I got a call from the head of the Prostate Cancer Foundation to say, we'd like to invite you to a dinner the recipient of the Nobel Prize in Medicine, who was funded by the Prostate Cancer Association, is coming to a dinner. We'd like you to meet him and some other notables out in Beverly Hills. So here I am two years before that with a death sentence. Now I'm jetting off to Beverly Hills. I mean, the dichotomy is amazing. So I get there and I said, why? And, and there were celebrities in this room. And I'm saying, what am I doing here with, you know, Stephen Stills and Wolfgang Puck and Seal and and why am I here? They said, well, I don't think you realize how we view the reach that you have in what we consider to be the most generous uh, community, business community, meaning retail auto dealers. I said, well, I, I can vouch for them. They're very generous. Uh, they're very community spirited and uh, are always the first ones to step up for a good cause. Well, they said, well, we view the grassroots initiative that you created here as something very valuable to us. And then Jim Allison, I would encourage anybody out there that wants to see an inspiring story to Google 
Jim Allison Nobel Prize. Uh, he is on the cutting edge. He will probably be the scientist that finds a cure for cancer in our lifetime. So that motivated me. Uh, he sat next to me and said, listen, we're, we're sending you in. Uh, it was kind of my coach. We're sending you out there. Please speak to your clients across the country. We need this money because we think, uh, he thinks he can be instrumental, if not the key person, to find a cure for all types of cancer through this pioneering methodology that he designed called immunotherapy, where uh, cells are actually created to fight off cancer and immobilizes uh, the immunosystem to fight off cancer. So it would eradicate the need for chemotherapy. I was so overwhelmed by the thought that I could do something meaningful. I said, well, now it's, now it's time for me to reach out to the dealers that I've represented over the past 30 years, uh, ironically, in wrongful termination cases. So now I'm not only saving the franchises, I'm saving the dealer principals. <laughs> so that's how this all culminated. And uh, I'm very anxious to partner with you guys to try and get the message out to dealers and let's do something good for the communities we serve and for our own families and ourselves. All right. Well, Len, thank you. That's an um, amazing story. Uh, so, Gene, we have decided to start today. Uh, Fixed Ops Roundtable is supporting Dealers versus Cancer. Uh, we are undertaking an initiative uh, with Len Belavia, and we are challenging all of our sponsors to match Gene and I. Gene, I'm going to kick in 500. You're kicking in $500 I'm as kicking well. 500 too. Yep. That's the first thousand to get Thanks. us started. Wow. We're challenging yeah. all of our sponsors. Uh, of the event to do the same thing. And we are going to uh, also ask all of the attendees, uh, you'll be getting a text uh, on your phone uh, now as well. And uh, you can see where you can go ahead and you can contribute. And uh, we would encourage you to do that as well. We're going to run this through the next uh, three, four fixed ops roundtables in October, in December, and right through January at NADA. And uh, we have a goal. We're going to raise fifty, at least fifty thousand dollars. Fifty thousand dollars. That's the goal. Yep. Yep. So and that's you know, the, so, and there's two calls to action here, uh, Len. You know, I think when we talked, you you remember that Ted and I are, have both been personally affected. And uh, the first call to action is this: to all of you men who are out there, get regularly screened. You know, I had a regular checkup that I did and I had that PSA test done regularly and that's how we found it. And that's how I found my cancer. And I was able to address it really early before it got bad. So that's the first call to action is make sure you get screened. And the second call to action is send an email if you want to get involved to dealersvcancer at dealerlaw.com. That's dealers V like victory cancer at dealerlaw.com. Great. Len, thank you so much. We're honored. Well, that's to be great. Thank you for your you. support. And as an industry, I know we're going to take the ball over the goal line. Thank you again, gentlemen. Absolutely. Thanks, Len. Well, Ted, we were so excited when we partnered with uh, Len Belavia regarding dealers versus cancer. And as soon as that word started getting out, we started hearing from our dealer partners and one of the friends of the round table got in touch with you right away. That's right, Gene. Caesar Augustus is the principal at dealer scanning. And as soon as Caesar heard about the dealers versus cancer challenge, uh, he was a hand raiser right after us, Gene. So Caesar's with us today. He's got a big announcement. Caesar, welcome back to the Fixed Stops round table. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Ted. Thank you, Gene. Yeah, we're excited to be part of this. I, I, I've been a member since the beginning with you guys, and I love just contributing. Uh, yeah, once we heard the, the, the work you're doing for, for cancer research, uh, it hit home, right? And uh, a quick story not to make it long. Our, our founding uh, partner uh, was diagnosed years ago with uh, prostate cancer, and he recovered. So this hits home. So because of that, and not only because of that, but because we, live in, we believe in contribution and helping. Uh, in this cause, uh, dealer scanning is, is donating three thousand uh, dollars to this cause. And Ooh. one of the things we want to do is we I'm challenging and inviting uh, all the other sponsors and some of the participants to donate and to match our donation. And I like to have someone else do a bigger donation than us. So I I uh, we're just very excited to be part of this and especially uh, donating to this great cause. And thank you, gentlemen, for for doing this. This is the best. So I appreciate you guys.
Caesar has been involved with us at the since the very first roundtable, Gene, in New York City, May of 2019. So $3,000 from dealer scanning towards wow. uh, dealers versus uh, can uh, cancer. Caesar, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, we're challenging all the sponsors. Let's, uh, let's match and let's uh, make some announcements along the way. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Caesar. We appreciate it very much. Thank you, gentlemen, for doing this. And again, it's an honor. Thank you. Well, Ted, that was great with Ed and the team there at Bozart Ford Lincoln Mercury. It was awesome. And our next presenter is someone who's a great friend of the roundtable, and he best sums up his personality with this phrase, we are not in the trying business. That's certainly our good friend, Ron Overs from Fixed Ops Magazine. Ron, welcome to the Fixed Ops Roundtable. Thank you, Ted. Thank you, Gene. Really appreciate this. Ron, I've been a fan of Fixed Ops Magazine for a, a long, long time, and you're doing a great service for our industry, especially this year in 2020. Um, tell us a little bit more about, I guess, about yourself and about Fixed Ops Magazine to start. Well, thank you, Ted. Uh, you know what? It has been an incredible year. Um, it's been one of those years uh, that, you know, getting involved with a magazine and trying to find out exactly how can you communicate to people. Um, and just to go, just to highlight, the magazine comes out every other month. So there's six issues a year, and each issue has about 10 stories, not written by staff uh, authors, but we go out and find great authors like you, Ted, like Ed Roberts, like Gene, like people who are just passionate about this business and give them an opportunity to tell their story. And so it's really great because I get a chance to filter through a lot of stories and decide which 10 we're going to be including in each one of the, uh, the magazines. And then at the same time, go out and work with advertisers who want to talk to our subscribers. Now we have about 40,000 subscribers today. So 40,000 people, if you go back to it, there's 16,573 franchise dealers in the United States. And so that means really three or four people per dealership are involved in reading our magazine. So really everybody from your fixed ops managers to your service managers, to your parts managers, general managers, owners, uh, many stores, get the magazine. Uh, I think you and I've talked about it and have a testament of how often you know, you walk into a store and sure enough, there's the copy of Fixed Ops Magazine on one of the guy's desks. And we really work really hard to make sure that the subscribers are people who really enjoy reading the magazine. So we are always working to, to do a really nice job of getting the subscriber list as pure and clean as possible. Uh, even last month, we added 120 new subscribers. We removed about 25. That just are no longer involved with the business. And so you were constantly refining and honing it to make sure that who gets this is worth their reading. Now, if you're not in the fixed ops magazine, this is, this is like, you know, you reading, you know, good housekeeping or something else. It really probably not something that you or I really uh, would spend a lot of time doing. So if you're not passionate about fixed ops, you're probably not getting our magazine or you're calling us to say really isn't what I, I need to do. So it works out really, really well. So that's the generic overview of the magazine is for 17 years, we've been out there doing exactly what we're doing today. Only today we're trying to do it better and better. Uh, we have a digital magazine as well as the print magazine. And the digital magazine is fun because it gives you a lot of features you don't have with just a paper magazine. I, I, I've, not, I've noticed that you've really stepped up the game at Fixed Ops Magazine and I can go, you know, certainly I get my, my copies delivered to me, the physical copy, but I can also go online now and I can, you know, read those 10 different stories that you curated. You pick the best of the best. And whether it's a, a, an advertiser that's, you know, in the fixed ops business, I can click right on that ad and it hot links directly to their URL and takes me, you know, to find out more information about their product or their service. We have really spent a lot of time this year, probably from like November through March, really we spent our time on getting a better platform for our digital magazine. And you watch, it's only gonna get better and better with more embedded videos, GIF pictures, just things that will attract you and hold you to a story so you can really focus. We all have the attention span of a gnat sometimes, you know, because we're just so many, we're getting bombarded with so much information. 
But if you can get the person to stay in the story and read, you know, the thousand or 1500 words that someone passionately put together, there's something in there that's going to help you better your business. And you really have to look at those and say, take the time, slow down for a few minutes and read through those stories. Now, what we found with the print magazine and people still love the print magazine as much as everyone said, oh, it's all going to go digital. We're all going to be reading this off our phones. We've made it easier to read it off the phone by having HTML text, which just means text that's easy to read on any size device on the digital. But the print is so nice to be able to just sit down and relax and read it at your own pace and not be interrupted with four, you know, important updates to the weather or whatever else is flashing across your phone while you're trying to read. Um, the other thing we're doing is trying to tie the two together. You'll see in this upcoming issue in September, more QR codes. The new phones all have that ability to just point the camera of the phone at the magazine and it'll take you right to the vendor's uh, website or wherever they, they want you to, you know, their landing page, they call it. And the beauty of this will be is you can integrate both. You could be sitting in your chair, reading the printer ma printed magazine and say, Sherwin Williams has a new paint process. Cool. Click on it. And now you get a full live stream video playing on your phone and basically integrate the print and the paper magazine together and really make it all work together and, uh, seamlessly. So we're having a lot of fun, you know, for a simple magazine, turning it into something really cool that can really convey some great ideas. Um, you know, this year with this pandemic, think about the things we've, we've spent time on stories, you know, uh, Ed Roberts with his uh, mobile unit. And by the way, right, what right. an incredible uh, um, place that he has today with all the new upgrades with the, the new Lincoln store, the new restaurant they're opening, you know, over 88 bays of service. I mean, it's just incredible. I'll be going down there later today uh, to check that out. But um, he introduced uh, in our magazine, you know, mobile service, literally going out to people's homes to do everything from, um, from recalls to uh, brake pad replacements, oil changes, all kinds of things where people literally don't have the time to come in for service. No problem. I'll come to you. And what he's done and explained in the article how he put that process together and what it really costs. So if you own a store and we're thinking about that idea, you could read that article and have the framework of what it would take for you to start that process. And as he said, you don't have to go out and buy a $100,000 van. You can start it with a, you know, uh, somebody said, you know, just a station wagon, whatever it takes just to get started and then upgrade as time goes on and, and, and let that happen. So it's kind of fun to just bring stories like Ed Roberts' story to the table and say, look, here's a better way of doing it. Maybe you hadn't thought about it. Um, another one, just for fun, last time we had an article written by a lawyer out of Philadelphia. Now, last guy we want to talk to is a Philadelphia lawyer, right? Well, this guy's on your side, right? So this is kind of cool. So he's a friend of mine, Jonathan, and Jonathan Ziss, um, high-powered attorney, does work for Delta Airlines, all kinds of places. But he said, you know, this idea of having a waiver that just simply says, let's have an agreement between myself and my employees. We're a team. You don't bring the virus to us. We're not going to bring the virus to you. Let's talk about when you're not here, how you're going to act. Let's talk about what we're going to do so when you are here, we're not going to transmit it between us. And so the idea is, Develop an agreement, and it doesn't have to be a 12-page legal document, but it's a promise both sides should consider. So that's an article we brought last time to the table. And the idea here is to say, think about concepts like this, because imagine if just that one stopped one person from bringing the virus into your building and knocking 10 people out of work for a month. Um, it's those kind of things that can help you do a better job with your business. So um, that's what we try to do, bring ideas to the table, is going to make people feel better about what they do and be, and also tell them what the best of the best are doing. You know, the Tully Williams, the Ed Roberts, the, there's so many of them out there that just do a phenomenal job. But, you know, ask them, how did you do it? I mean, you know, I, I don't want to hear your great. Tell me what led to your success. And, and Ron, if I may, I love the relationship that we have between Fixed Ops Magazine and the Fixed Ops Roundtable, because a lot of the folks who speak at the round table, write for Fixed Ops Magazine and vice versa. So you can come and get a taste of them live here at the event. Uh, when you want to dig in deeper and ask some questions and do some follow-up, and like you just said about Ed Roberts, find out the how-to, how he did this with the mobile service, how he did these things, and how I could do it perhaps just to get started. You've got the advice of an expert who's already 
perhaps made the mistakes, you know, so that you don't have to experience them. So we appreciate that relationship between, you know, our two organizations. Oh, where else would I go to find the, the most passionate people in the business? I mean, your round tables are just, just awesome. I attended the one in Las Vegas in uh, January. And I think that's when we talked about this right away. And I said, this is a synergy that has to happen because, you know, I look at it and said, sales really, and this is, this is another lesson I always taught my, my sons, right? And the idea, set, people buy on emotion and they confirm on intellect, all right? So when they hear you talking, right, it's emotion, right? We're transferring emotion about a subject, but you can only transfer so much emotion in the time frame that you're allowed, right, with, with the, the round table. But at the same time, when you want the intellect that backs up that decision, you stop, you sit down, and you read the rest of the story, and you learn the rest of the story. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We take those, those things that people have talked about and said, here's the rest of the story. Stop and read about it, and you'll only become better educated um, and, and thought leaders in your business. You're going to know. People are going to come to you and say, hey, what about this? How do I get this problem solved? You, you know what? I heard someone talk about that. I read an article about it. This is the way we're going to proceed. And now you come across as the thought leaders and go ahead and, you know, grow your business uh, that way. Ron, Gene, Gene, by the way, and by the way, if I may, Gene and I have always talked for many, many years about that process of logic and emotion. So, you know, you're, you're right on with that. So, and, and one more thing, if I may, you know, there are, um, I don't want to say the word imitators, but there are a couple of people who've attempted to do what you've already done for a long, long time, and no one does it better. And, you know, what I've been asked, you know, Fixed Ops Magazine or this other publication, and when you just put them side by side and look at the depth of Fixed Ops Magazine and look how much content you've got in there and how many experts and how the whole, you've got the whole thing going, Ron. So there's, there's nowhere else to go but Fixed Ops Magazine. Well, thank you so much for that, that endorsement as well, because, you know, truth of the matter, that really is important. At the end of the day, if we're not reaching the audience and giving them some content that's worthwhile, I mean, we're not the sugar guys, okay? We're not, we're not going to just give you the smell of steak. We're going to give you the steak, okay? And the idea is, is to really go out there and say, what made it work for you? What are you passionate about? I don't know if you, you've, you met Joe St. John and you've heard him talk, right? Well, when you try to get him to slow down and write his thoughts down on paper, it took him two months to put an article together for us to really just slow down and boil down in 1,500 words or less what makes it tick, you know? And you know what? He came up with a great story that's going to be in the September issue uh, that's coming out. It's coming out right about now. So, uh, and it's going to be great. And the idea is you take someone like that and you say, boil down what you said. Uh, Tully Williams, I'm working with a story for him and, you know, he can talk a mile a minute. He knows, his, he knows his game, but get him to boil that down and make it into a great story. We're working together on that so that everyone can have that same understanding of what drives him and makes him so passionate about selling ours. You know, so it's just going to be really great when that article comes out. That'll be the November issue, probably. Um, two, so two very introverted guys there, Joe St. <laughs> and Kelly Williams. Well, Ron, thank you. I'm having a lot of fun with this. I really am. It's, it's been great. It's been great to be with folks like you and to be partner with you. Even like you said, the, the charity that you're putting together, you know, helping with the charity with uh, uh, Len. and Nose versus cancer. Yep. Len Belinda. Involved in any of those kind of things we can do to help grow this marketplace and this industry. So uh, thank you so much for, for everything you guys do and have done for us. I really appreciate it. It's our, our, my pleasure and our pleasure. Ron Overs from Fixed Ops Magazine, the publisher here at the Fixed Ops Roundtable. Ron, thanks again. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate it. Ron, we appreciate you. Thank you very much for joining us at the Fixed Ops Roundtable and for your contribution to Dealers Against Cancer. Now we want to welcome a good friend of the Roundtable, Rob Leary from BG Products. Rob Leary is the Director of Sales at BG Products, a great friend of the Fixed Ops Roundtable. And uh, Rob is back with us this morning. Rob, welcome to the Fixed Ops Roundtable. Hey, thank you, Ted. Appreciate it. Rob, at every one of these events, uh, many of the speakers that follow you reference your presentation uh, before them. So I'm excited to hear what you've got. And uh, Rob, the show is yours. Hey, thanks again, Ted, uh, for putting this together. Hey, the Fixed Ops 
Brown Table, I think is really just making a phenomenal name for itself. And it really is becoming the front door to everything fixed. So excited to be here today. And, uh, and good morning, everybody. Once again, uh, I'm excited to talk a little bit about the, the fixed ops side of the business, but more specifically about our oil change business, as crazy as that sounds. And I, I want to talk about not just the oil change business, but how do we make an oil change business a profitable business and not a loss leader? But before we do that, let's talk a little bit about some of the market dynamics that are going on in the industry today. And you know, when you think about it, um, an old buddy of mine always says, you know, in good times, we kind of develop bad habits, right? And then in the bad times, you develop good habits. Um, and rather, obviously, the pandemic, as we have all seen it, right, created some bad times for our dealerships. But dealers got through it, and the savvy ones really got through it and got creative, right? And, and so it's no surprise, I think, that when April turned around that the car counts in the service drive dropped by about 50% or more in some cases, depending on where you were at in the country, right? But interesting enough, according to Dealer FX, back um, in, I think it was January, February timeframe, we actually saw an increase in the average CPRO sales by as much as 35 bucks, it went from 243 to a whopping 278, right? And I think that fact that we were able to do that during the darkest days of the pandemic says something about our dealers, right? And, and you start thinking about it, but you, you got to ask yourself, well, how did that happen, right? And, and the way I think it happened, or conventional wisdom kind of tells us, is it happened because non-essential oil services, right, were getting defer deferred, right? And, and while customers then had to rely on getting more essential repair services done. So it kind of made sense, right? But we also found that advisors were actually spending more time with their customers and our MPI and process started to improve as well, right? Dealers got focused, managers got focused on doing an, a proper MPI and really, really starting to try to drive the MPI and get more dollars per RO because at 50% drop in ROs, man, you got to do something, right? And then, of course, we saw the concierge service go out of the roof, right? I mean, everyone and their brother was doing concierge service. Whether you're in a metro, rural, or middle America, it didn't matter. Everyone was getting into the concierge service business. But you look back now, right? And we're, we just finished August. We're halfway through September. And you look at the business, and we're really back to business as usual, right? Our RO counts are back to normal. The average dollars per RO have gone back down. 70 to 80% of our business now is oil change business again. And the advisors, again, are spending less time with customers because they're dealing with the chaos as more and more customers are coming through the drive. And you're bringing people back from furlough and all of that, right? But the management, management is now managing the chaos and they're not managing the MPIs anymore. They're not holding the teams accountable as much as we did. And then you're seeing dealers actually move away from the self-service kiosk. So, in a kind of weird way, we're kind of back to where we started, which isn't really the best thing. And then you add to this, right, the fact that, um, and I don't want to paint the gloom and doom here, right, but we've got to talk about it. Um, but you, you add to this the fact that the vehicle quality on vehicles continues to improve, right? OEMs continue to tout the low cost of ownership. And then of course, our friends from the new and used and certified side of it, what do they say? They tout the same thing the OEMs do. Oh, you don't need to do anything on this vehicle. It's maintenance free and it's all you need to do is an oil change every 10,000 miles or so. And the consumers, what do they do? They come in program thinking that exact same way. And as a result, as a result, unfortunately, our dealers, rightly so, feel pressured to provide a low cost oil change to their customers because they want to retain them. And it makes sense. So, we started looking at, at it from a BG perspective, right? We started looking at the oil change business and we noticed a trend, an interesting trend that not many people were looking at, but we noticed that the oil change prices that dealers were actually charging were in many cases below the mass merchandisers and independents in their markets. And many, in fact, many were still operating an oil change business as a loss leader. But the data shows that that, that formula just flat out doesn't work, right? We still have customers that 
de defect at 70% post warranty, right? And on top of it, we still have some OEMs, although more and more getting away from this, but some OEMs are still programming the customers to think that their first two years of oil changes are free, right? And that creates a very difficult customer environment to deal with, right? Advisors have to deal with this every day. Ask a customer what they're in for, I'm in for my oil change. Oh, and what do they get? They get an oil change. So we're trying to change that with BG. And one of the ways that we're doing that is we're doing some different things, right? Kind of the what to do. So we're doing a competitive market analysis, right? So we do a competitive market analysis of what synthetic oil changes are in their market. And then the next thing we do is we try to retain the dealer's current pricing structure for their oil changes. And then we do something different. One small additive ingredient called what we call MOA or motor oil additive. And we add that to the oil change. In other words, we actually put the MOA oil chain, MOA motor oil additive into the actual op code within the DMS. And it becomes, guess what? That's the only way the oil change price comes. It includes MOA. And the reason that's so important team is because now I'm able to take a unprofitable loss leader business in the oil change and move it to higher dollars per row, higher gross per row. And most importantly for the customer, I've got protection because with our motor oil additive, you get up to $4,000 of engine coverage. And I'm just talking for the oil change. I'm not even talking about the rest of the juice, which I'll get into in a moment, right? But that really ties the customer back because in our program, every 10,000 miles, you've got to come back for that oil change, but you're getting that continued $4,000 of benefit. And the dealer, the dealer, the beauty of this is, guess what? They're able to stay right in the sweet spot with their competition, right? So think about this. And here's how the analysis works, right? Again, we, we did a Honda dealer as an example here. And this, I think, was actually in Michigan, so a very competitive environment in the, in the Detroit market. And we went ahead and looked at the market research. And what the market research said was, quite frankly, we fell right smack dab in the middle, even when we added MOA to our oil change, meaning that the dealer, the dealer was down below most of the competitors in his market, mass merchandisers and independents alike, right? And so the really cool thing about this is when we did this in just short, a short three month period, right? We took a 42 store dealership group and we moved them and where they were doing about 70%, 70% of their market, of their business, of their ROs written, literally was LOF business. And we turned that and we, as you can see there on the right hand corner at the bottom, 57.96% of the time, right? we were able to penetrate that with our MOA oil additive. And now we've got a retention program, we've got a profitable oil change business, and things are looking up tremendously, right? So the cool thing about it is it can be done, right? But there's also an opportunity, as I said earlier, that we have more opportunity to sell the juice, as we like to call it in the BG world. I don't mean that kind of juice, I mean this kind of juice. Right? So all the preventative maintenance items that allow us to provide preventative maintenance, which only helps the customer's car, what? In the health of the car. So it's, fun, it's more fun to drive. It's got the same push in the gas pedal that it used to. It's got the same gas mileage when it was delivered new. All of those things add into that, and it makes for the perfect, perfect preventative maintenance story. Okay? And so when we do that, we noticed a huge difference when we added a menu, a digital menu, and yes, I'm gonna talk a little bit about our smart digital menu into the equation. And a crazy thing happened. It's something that we fundamentally knew. We fundamentally knew this was the, the makeup that would help the preventative maintenance grow, but we really didn't know until we put the numbers to it. And here's the story behind this. This is pretty amazing. So this is a Toyota dealer. Right, and the Toyota dealer, just as an example, about the same number of ROs. Um, but if you look at this and look at the top store A, that top store A did a 71%. Look at the far right over there 71%, 1,552 BG services sold were pour ins, 
right? That's from MOA to ethanol to batteries to friggy fresh to trans pours, cool pours, et cetera. All of that's in there. But look how the business proved out even more. A Ford store, a Ford store, same thing, same story, right? Maybe a little less ROs on store A, a little more on store B, but look at the penetration difference. 82% of that business was penetrated, right? Only 18% with the store that didn't have a digital menu, a BG digital menu. And look at this story. This is even the best story, right? Um, and Honda store A, 103% penetration on the poor ends, right? The juice as we like to call it. And look at the difference there. That means they were selling more BG services per RO than anything. The other dealer that didn't have a BG menu, 1%. Okay. So the reason I bring that story to you is because, yeah, it is all about selling the juice, but you're probably wondering about how do we sell more juice, right? What am I leaving on the table? But not this table, right? This table. This is the maintenance, the preventative maintenance juice that's really going to drive it. And when you look at this, when you look at this and you start looking at the, what we call the juice calculator, as funny as that sounds, look at the dollars for this store, right? A customer pay, if you look up there on the right, in yellow, CPROs per month, 1,000. Annualized sales of 296,000, look at the bottom right. Look at the total sales there. On poor ends alone, I'm 181,000 dollars in porins. What dealer wouldn't want that kind of juice sales or that kind of preventative maintenance sales? And that's what it's really about, right? Is how do I move the needle in my fixed ops business? And I'm telling you, this is the way to do it, okay? So in summary, when we look at all of that, all of that body of work, you got to start with the basics. You got to start by adding MOA to every oil change and watch your business grow. More importantly, watch your advisor's confidence grow. And watch your customers come, continue to come back because of that lifetime protection. Every 10,000 miles, if I do that oil change, I'm always going to be protected up to $4,000. And then once you've accomplished that goal of maybe 50 to 70% penetration, like that 42-store group was doing, then, then you can look at taking the next step and really moving the needle in the juice category and all of the preventative maintenance categories, right? And that's what it's all about is how do we move our oil change business really to a preventative maintenance business and then take it to the next level and continue to drive that value, but more importantly, drive that profitability and drive that retention that all of our dealers need. So um, if you're interested in understanding more about the juice calculator and how we did that for a 42 store group, as well as many more other groups, right? Contact your local BG rep, or as always contact me personally. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Rob Leary, BG Products, great job once again. Rob, our, our dealers are thirsty for that juice and that presentation just makes so much sense. It's back to basics and um, you, you boiled it down so it's very, very easy to understand and digestible. So Rob, thank you so much. How can our dealers learn more about BG and, and get on board? Yeah, real simple. So just to keep it uh, easy for everybody, you can just email me at rleary at bgprod.com. Cell phone number 513-240-5689, or as 53% of the market knows, they know their BG rep because 53% of the market owns BG. So contact your local BG rep if you know them. Otherwise, contact me at the given information. And everyone, Rob's information is in the virtual program where you can go online and you can link directly to his email and directly to the BG site. Rob Leary, BG Products, thank you so, so much. Thank you, Ted. Take care, everyone.